Hello there guys and welcome to this x 11 video. Today we're going to be taking a look at World Traffic 3. We are going to be taking a look at the installation, configuration and operation of this AI traffic plugin for x 11. It is my aim in this video to provide you with a full review showing the pros and cons of this plugin along with some performance considerations that could help improve the experience using this plugin in x 11. The installation of World Traffic has been improved in version 3 thanks to the automated installer that will install all the core files into their correct location in your x 11 folder. Once you've completed the purchase at the x Org store, you will be provided with the wt3setup.zip file. We're going to right-click and extract the contents here, and then we're going to end up with a wt 3 underscore setupexe Double-click that. Agree, agree. Quickly on Navigraph data, if you have the Navigraph FMS Data Manager, it already has a data set for wall traffic. So you don't need to install the Navigraph data. So we're just going to install the core uh, world traffic three files. And the destination folder is, as you can see, is selected automatically. Now, just a quick note on this. When you're doing the installation for the very first time, you might need to actually browse to your x 11 installation, but all subsequent updates uh, will be automatically recognized by the installer. So we're just going to say install. As you can see, the installation is now complete. Make sure that you get the new aircraft for wall traffic three. Now, I've downloaded one of those files, which is the Airbus file. Um, I already have all the aircraft installed. Uh, I will be providing you with all the links that you need to download everything. Uh, and they are, of course, available on the, uh, on the developer's uh, website as well. But let me show you very quickly how do we install the, uh, the aircraft, the AI models. So we're going to extract here. And you're going to see that you have Airbus 1. Now, these two files, these two folders are the ones that we want to move into our uh, world traffic installation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those two files. I'm going to go to my x folder. And then we're going to go to Classic Jet Sim Utils. And then we're going to go to World Traffic. And as you can see, you already have those two folders here, Aircraft Object and Aircraft Types. I'm just going to say right click and paste. And as you can see now, uh, the, um, those, those AI traffic models are now installed ready for use. Another thing that's worthwhile mentioning is that the licensing is still manual. So after purchase, you will receive your license via email. Uh, it, it was quite fast. I did receive the license uh, in about 10 minutes or so from the purchase. So it's quite quick. Uh, but again, I was expecting a, a fully automated experience in version three. So it was kind of a, you know, a bit of a disappointment. And again, you know, having to install the models in this way, I think was also kind of a disappointment. I would have uh, preferred to, you know, to use an installer that will install all these models um, automatically into the uh, correct locations. But in, in order to install your license, you need to go to explain 11 and then resources, plugins, and then you need to look for world traffic. And as you can see, I have a world traffic key uh, here. So this is where you need to install your license. This pretty much concludes the installation procedure of world traffic. Uh, let us now jump back into x 11 and set up some flights and take a look at the operation of world traffic 3. For all intended purposes, we are currently situated at JFK Airport in the United States. And the first thing we need to do upon the successful installation of World Traffic 3 is add the keyboard mappings that will help us operate and configure the plugin. Now, this was a major disappointment as far as I'm concerned, as things have not improved at all from the previous version in this department. Uh, I was really expecting a modern interface and a fully developed control panel that will really make operating this plugin um, easy. Now, it is easier than the previous version, uh, without a doubt. So setting up your flights, your ground routes is, without a doubt, far more easier than any previous version of World Traffic. So let me go ahead and show you uh, 
uh, very quickly my mappings. So this is CJS uh, world traffic. So I have shift A for activating ATC. Previous ATC inst instruction is control A, activate key command shift T, go to the previous menu control T, resynchronize flight plan is control R. Now, by the way, I'll leave this here. You can, you can copy this if you like, but just a word of caution. Some of these mappings that I've used were actually mapped to other things in X-Plane 11, which I personally don't use. So I've over, uh, overwritten uh, those assignments. So you might want to select something else. And I do have shift C for the world traffic radar as well. It is now time for us to put some AI traffic into the X-Plane 11 skies. So let's go to plugins, world traffic, flight setup. Okay, so of course, as you can see, some of this information is already filled out from my previous tests. Uh, the aircraft ICO name is a Boeing 737-300. The operator ICO code is American uh, Airline and the call sign is American. The aircraft type is large jet. This is automatically detected by world traffic. The departure airport uh, ICO code is KJFK, uh, which is again uh, detected automatically by the plugin. Arrival code is KDCA, which is Ronald Reagan Airport. Uh, cruise altitude is 28,000 feet, and this is our departure time. Now, on these sliders, let me tell you the ones that actually affect performance. I think they're pretty much um, self-explanatory. And this item here, so max number of flight plans to generate recommend maximum settings and I do recommend the maximum settings as a matter of fact um, traffic density set lower of too much traffic now this item will definitely affect performance at JFK with the maximum number of flights at hundred percent the total loss in frames was about four frames four FPS okay so I'm using the Bluebell models um, and there's quite a bit of aircraft that will be loaded within the 120 nautical mile radius so it will affect performance. My recommendation is to keep this slider at 80%. I'm going to keep it at 100% to just show you guys uh, the effect on performance. Um, but um, my recommendation is to keep it at 80. The percentage of gates with a parked aircraft after reaching 60%, I think that's perfectly fine. I've, you can go ahead and crank this up all the way to 100%. It will have a negligible effect on performance, maybe one or two FPS at best in a very busy airport and then the flight plan load radius for arrival and departure airports in nautical miles now this is something that will also affect performance okay and as you travel into an area or as you're departing from an airport every time an aircraft comes within the 100 and not and 120 nautical mile radius you will experience some kind of a pause, a very short pause, okay? Um, now, this is, this is probably not very noticeable in smaller airports where there isn't a lot of traffic, but when there's a lot of traffic and a lot of traffic is moving in and out of that 120 nautical mile radius, you will feel it. So the experience is not exactly smooth. Um, so it, it, kind of, it kind of bothered me in the first few flights that I've done. So I decided to kind of put things back to about 80% traffic so that I don't experience this as much or if it does happen, then it's not very noticeable and the intervals at which it happens are kind of far away from one another so that you don't feel it. Overall, in terms of performance, I think uh, this version of roll traffic uh, is quite good. It's easy on performance. Uh, I remember in World Traffic 2, uh, with you know with really dense areas dense airports and especially when there are heavy clouds then performance is degraded uh, beyond the point of being able to fly in the sim so now that we have all the sliders set up and by the way now you can also set up the GA and military aircraft my recommendation is actually to leave this on auto unless you're at a small GA airport and you know you want to see a lot of traffic coming in and out of that airport then you can start tweaking this. My recommendation is to leave everything on auto. All right, so we are now ready to create the flights. Uh, before we do so, let me just point out one thing about the ground, uh, ground route generator. 
If the ground routes are already available, the only thing that world traffic will do when you click on create flights is create the flight plans. But if the ground routes aren't available for any of the airports, whether the departure or destination airports, then it will prompt you to create those ground routes. Now, creating the ground routes itself can take a very long time, maybe 10 minutes or so, uh, depending on how large the airport is. And during that creation or during the generation of the, uh, of the ground routes, you will probably, your, your frame rates will go down to one. Uh, so don't worry about that. It's just because world traffic is working in the background to create uh, and generate the uh, ground routes. So it's it's not nothing to be alarmed about. All right. So I'm, what I'm going to say now is create flights. And as you can see now, it's generating the flight plans. I think starting with JFK. And now um, KDCA. And creating the flight plans doesn't really take that long. As you can see, it's quite fast. The ground routes, however, uh, take a lot of time to create. So I've already done a few tests. So um, it's already the ground routes I've already created before actually doing this video so that it won't take that much time. Um, so we're loading the SIDS and STARS now. And by the way, I do have the latest ARAC database as well uh, installed. So we're loading the SIDS and STARS. And now we should start, as you can see now, the aircraft started popping here uh, at the airport. So let me remove this now. And we should have um, some aircraft now around the airport. Well, not that many for some reason. Oh, there we go. So there are a number of aircraft here now and over there, and we should be able to see some aircraft um, taken off and coming to land here at JFK. All right, let's go ahead and bring up the uh, world traffic radar. And as you can see now, this is, um, is this, this JFK? I believe it is, yes. So this is the 10 nautical mile range. So we have a, looks like a general aviation aircraft. Let's go ahead and click on track. There we go. It crashed. Welcome back after the crash, guys. And as I've indicated previously, that World Traffic 3 still isn't 100% stable. Uh, we can see that there is an aircraft right over there. So let me go ahead and bring up the um, World Traffic uh, radar. As you can see, there are some aircraft around the area now. This is what we have within 20 nautical miles of the airport, 40 nautical miles and 80 nautical miles, quite a bit of traffic uh, in the vicinity, which I think really fills up the skies. And uh, let me bring up the um, the frame counter here, just to see kind of what we're getting in terms of frames. So as you can see, the uh, frame rate has now significantly reduced, um, but that's all right. So let me remove this now. Oh, so when we remove the world traffic radar window, we go back to our normal frames. That's interesting. Okay, so let me go ahead and bring up the radar again, actually. And we'll go to the 10 nautical mile radius and let's try to track this aircraft here. So track the aircraft. All right, so thankfully this time it did not crash. And as you can see in the, let me remove this guy here. All right, so we can see right down here uh, the flight plan name, the aircraft type, the speed, and where it's actually going uh, is not known at the moment. Yeah. So, but we can tell that the destination until the next waypoint is 107 nautical miles, and the route distance remaining uh, before the destination is 118.3 nautical miles. So there we go, we have a departure here with an aircraft uh, making a turn right there, as you can see. All right, let me change the time of day here to see the aircraft lights. So definitely we can see the beacon and the strobes. So as you can see now, we do have some activity here at JFK. We have a few aircraft taxiing here, uh, right there and right here. And it does provide for a, um, you know, extra level of realism for sure. It's far better flying with other AI aircraft than flying alone in the X-Plane uh, world. Now, the ATC in, 
in world traffic is is not done well in my opinion but it actually helps especially when you're arriving at airports because the last thing you want is you know you're coming to land and aircraft just takes off uh, from the same runway where you're landing and in order to do this we I have shift and A uh, that will begin the ATC session for your flight so right now we can request taxi to any of the available runways for left for right 13 right and 13 I'm looking right here uh, so we'll say for example 13 right and we'll say enter so it says JFK to American taxi to runway 13 right via you know the taxiways expect to use SID JFK 3 13 right for departure now once you reach that point uh, you will receive further ATC instructions and I do recommend that you actually use this there's another aircraft taken off here uh, I do recommend that you use this because and it will really coordinate the movement uh, of other aircraft relative to yours so as you come to take off uh, there will not be other aircrafts landing on that same runway or kind of you know taking off with you so I think world traffic 3 would disable the other aircraft so that you can actually take off safely so in terms of functionality I think world traffic 3 uh, delivers on its promise it does fill up the sky uh, with AI traffic it provides for that extra level of realism with that said though I do hope that the next version of world traffic uh, would address things like the um, glitches and and the performance hiccups that it's got today and definitely uh, it could use um, an improvement in the user interface and control panel departments I think it would really uh, be a lot more um, useful and easier to use uh, enjoyable if those things were addressed so this brings us really to the conclusion of our video today folks I hope that you have enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you and if you have any questions please do post them in the comment section below and until next time please take care of yourselves and each other I will see you all very soon thanks for watching and bye-bye for now